A power crunch in China? Pumps run dry in Britain? Volcanoes in Spain? What could this all mean? I don't know. Yep, yeah, I have no idea either. We need a research analyst. There is a whole world of jobs out there, most of which we've never heard of. Let's explore that world together. To help us analyze this career, we're joined by Philip. Philip, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. All right, tell me, what is it that you do? Yeah, so I am a principal power and renewables analyst at Fitch Solutions. Uh, the company is part of the Fitch Group, working alongside Fitch Ratings to give our clients information essential in making credit risk and strategy decisions with data, research, and analytics. My speciality is in the energy and infrastructure forecasting uh, on power and renewables specifically. So essentially, I'm a member of a team that conducts high-level thematic research and analysis into global power generation capacity and uh, consumption, tracking major projects across more than 120 markets globally, and uh, monitoring and forecasting the impacts of disruptive technologies, uh, sustainable energy transition trends, and those sorts of things. Uh, to put it simply, my job is to analyze and forecast market trends to give our clients the ability to make informed investment decisions uh, where they can minimize risk and maximize returns. Uh, we do this by seeking out and analyzing changes in the market, uh, applying this information to proprietary algorithms and data models, uh, which we have designed for long range accuracy out to 10 years, and creating analytical data sets, uh, articles, reports. And this goes out to our clients to help them make informed decisions on asset allocation and uh, financing and the like. All right. Okay. So, so, so if I can sort of try and sum that up in my head as someone who's not familiar with any of this. Yes. Uh, so basically, there are people out there who are looking to make investments. And, and in your particular case, it's specific to renewables and power. Yep. And, and you kind of tell them, this is probably a good idea. This is maybe not such a good idea based on all of this data. Is that, is that kind of right? Yeah, that's essentially right. So a lot of our clients are major banks, so they would be the financiers for projects like this. Uh, of course, we have a lot of clients that are the, the principal investors to begin with as well. So essentially, we we analyze the risks and return possibilities for different markets and different sectors. So, so obviously, that's sort of the big, broad overview of what you do and what you should be achieving for your clients. But sort of what, what does an actual day look like for you? Are you always feeling smart in front of a computer and a spreadsheet or, or you know, is, is it mostly sort of emails? What, what is the actual sort of what takes up your time? Yeah, so the cornerstone of my role is to collect and analyze information. So most of my time is spent researching market events, analyzing their impacts and forecasting trends. Uh, one of the company's core strengths is the emphasis it places on collaboration between teams and different sectors. So I also spend a lot of time in meetings with colleagues from other teams, sharing our insights to better understand how these events impact uh, market trends as a whole, so not just for the power and renewable sector. Uh, once we've got all of that information, I need to apply it to our forecasts and write articles. Um, on any pertinent implications in the sector. Uh, my company also uh, offers clients direct access to uh, analysts. So I spend a lot of my time preparing and presenting our forecasts to clients uh, and the media in meetings, webinars, and interviews. Okay. All right. So a little bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So 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 it's 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 those basic stages of of researching the events, analyzing what the impact is, presenting it to the stakeholders. Exactly. Yeah. What What do you say is your favorite part of that process, or just of the job in general? So. I find the whole job really interesting, <laughs> knowing what's going on in the world and how it affects different markets and different sectors is a major perk. I worked for five years at a well-known uh, news broadcaster and never really had access to the type of information that I do at Fitch. So uh, it's really mm. it's really nice to have access to so much information, such in-depth information on, on major world events. Uh, being a primary source of information, the analysis we produce and consume is far more neutral than anything you might find on the news as well. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. Uh, there are no mm. political or social agendas to pursue, and that gives us the ability to really look at both sides of the uh, geopolitical and economic landscape. And as an added perk, improving my general knowledge has uh, made me far more competitive <laughs> at our family game of 30 seconds every Christmas as well. Very cool. Very cool. Similar answer to Jean-Emile from our interview on being a journalist, funny enough. A lot of similarities there. Yeah. Cool. All right. So so uh, there must be something you don't like 
uh, or, or something that you find at least bothersome about this role? What, what do you find difficult? Well, given that we deal with a large amount of information and work with tight deadlines, it can be a lot of hard work. Uh, I can tell you that the amount of hours that I spend behind the desk on weekends is probably far more than I should. Uh, but that's something that comes with the territory. Uh, when major global events like COVID-19 happen, uh, they can really disrupt the markets, the global market that is. And because of that, our analysis can be essential mm. to our clients in order to minimize the damage that these events can do to their businesses and their economies. So uh, we are occasionally forced into a position where there are not enough hours in a day to finish the work that needs to be done. And that can be pretty stressful. Mm, right. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So, so the type of person who might excel at this sort of job, I mean, obviously you, you've got to have some technical skills when it comes to, to data analysis. Um, so, so what are some of the skills that you need and what are some of the personality types that you might need for this? Well, you'd have to be interested in current affairs, geopolitics and economics. Uh, in my role as a power and renewables analyst, we also have uh, we have to know quite a lot about the engineering and technical aspects of different power generation, transmission, and storage technologies too. So uh, you'd have to have a pretty deep interest in uh, those aspects as well. Um, as I said, it is quite labor intensive. So you have to have a pretty decent attention span and, and just kind of be willing to put in the work that needs to be done when it needs to be done. Okay. All right. Cool. And uh, what sort of person would you uh, advise doesn't pursue this sort of uh, environment? Yeah, so someone who doesn't deal well with stress and isn't interested in politics and economics wouldn't be well suited to the job. Uh, if you're not good with numbers, then you would have great difficulty uh, in writing these reports and coming up with these forecasts and this definitely wouldn't be the job for you. It also involves a lot of public speaking and meetings and presentations. So if you're not a confident speaker, then uh, you may not enjoy it either. But I would say that there's a little bit more specific to Fitch Solutions as most analysts and other companies don't necessarily have to speak that much uh, directly to clients and present their research in person uh, in seminars and things like that at all. All right. And I suppose just a last question kind of to sum that up. Uh, are there any sort of barriers to entry? Like, do you need any sort of qualifications uh, specifically for this or is it if you're a smart person cool yeah no absolutely you need to be qualified to do this so the way that i essentially got the job was uh, i got a job as an analyst first after completing a master's degree in international relations focusing on uh, international political economics so my background in live on a presentation uh, that I spoke about a little bit earlier, that was helpful given the emphasis that Fitch puts on client interaction. But as I said, that's quite specific to the company. The interview process was quite intense. There's only one spot open right now. So we're going to have tryouts. Uh, so it started with two rounds of face-to-face -face interviews with different senior members of the research team. Uh, then there was also a written aspect of the interview where you were given uh, standard economic data and asked to calculate certain indicators, uh, analyze the data and interpret its implications on given variables. So there was a three month probationary period in the beginning as well, where you're trained, tested on your training and uh, given some type of work that or, or the similar type of work that you'll be doing for the rest of uh, your career at the company. It's quite a steep learning curve and you do need to measure up to expectations. Otherwise, the company uh, may let you go at the end of the probationary period. But uh, even though it's it's quite tough in that regard, the interview process is very tough as well. So it's quite rare for that to happen. Uh, in terms of barriers to entry, you definitely do need to be qualified and you definitely do need to be able to demonstrate those skills during that uh, intensive interview process. Sheesh. Okay. All right. <laughs> so it's not just for anyone there. Uh, yeah. Let me just sum up by saying uh, thank you so much for giving us some insight into in, into this career. And uh, I, I wish you good luck and, and uh, fewer weekend working hours. Thanks so much for joining me. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and have a lovely day further. Thank you. It's been great, and thanks for having me.